Oh man. Good morning. I'm here in Park City, Utah. I'm just here in my hotel room before I start the day and head over to uh, Woodward Park City. Before I start the video and before I try to see how high I can jump just straight up from flat, learn some new tricks on the resin, and just hang out with the kids over there, I wanna share with you guys what I read in the Word this morning. I read in Matthew 2. Basically, this first part of the Gospel of Matthew talks about the birth of Jesus Christ and how everything took place uh, when that happened. Today, I think the one thing that I, one of the one things that I got out of uh, today's reading was that Jesus Christ's name is countercultural. See, Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is a king. Jesus is the one that gives us salvation from our sins. Yet Jesus was born in a feeding trough for animals, and he grew up in a town that nobody really heard of. And if you did hear of it, then you knew it wasn't that special of a town. And one of the crazy things is also that Jesus lived a life of a servant. He was always looking to help other people. He was always looking to uh, benefit somebody else's life, not take from somebody else's life not take their money, not take their joy, but to give them joy and to give them life. And the reason I say that's so countercultural is because today in our world culture, when you're a king, when you have clout, when you are, you know, considered really good at what you do, the world says that you should be praised, that you should be taking from everybody else, that you should be given things. But Jesus didn't live a life like that. Instead, he poured out into everybody else. And so for me, that's really encouraging as a believer because I know that I'm called to emulate and be like Christ. And so today, uh, that's my challenge for myself. And honestly, it's a challenge every day for myself uh, is to serve like Jesus, to love like Jesus, to show mercy like Jesus, and to be like Christ. It's countercultural, but it's so fulfilling and satisfying in the end. Anyway, let's start the day. All right, so to skate park. Right here is one of my favorite pieces. I know it's silly, but it's because it's just a piece of wood, a little dowel. One of my favorite pieces of here at Copper, or Park City. One of the fun things that I've done, one of the funnest things that I've done on just riding flat with my skater is just doing triple heels and rise and all that stuff. But Learning how to jump high just straight from flat with no ramp generated just from my legs helps a lot with learning tricks. Oh yes, okay. Easy enough. I'm gonna go up two inches, get to 40. Since I finally have comments back on YouTube, I wanna know, have you guys ever done a high jump challenge for yourself like this? You've ever done this before? What's the highest you've done? I love it. All right, I'm feeling good on 40. I did 42. Uh, for me and Ian were shooting photos for Woodward. I'm gonna move up one inch, get 41. I'm gonna see if I can get 42 again. It's pretty challenging. Here we go, moment of truth, 42 inches. What do you think, Ian? Have I got it? I think you got this, man. Yeah. Oh, there it is. No problem. No problem? Heck yeah, thank you for that. 42, done. Since I'm here, might as well try 43. I think All you right. got 44. 44? Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, dang it. <laughs> A little early. It's okay, it's okay. All right, I'm gonna get one more. And then after that, I'm 
I'm gonna call it regardless if I land it or not, because 43 for me is already a win. Heck yes, dude. So fun. All right, 44 inches. That's money record here at Woodward Park City. On to the next segment. All right, one of the cool features, or I guess two of the cool features here at Woodward Park City is their pump track. They have one outdoor and they also have one indoor. I'm gonna kind of run through both of them, give it like one or two uh, run throughs on each one and see which one I like better. track you can get going pretty fast if you hit all of the ramps just right coming into this berm section definitely has to be my favorite because it shoots you out into the next roller just right hitting the doubles of course super fun but these last four little humps aren't necessarily my favorite they're a little bit crammed together and I'm not sure if I'm supposed to jump them as doubles or what I'm supposed to do but it's still pretty fun <laughs> I'm not the best in the world, but I like what I do. You know Charlie, the guy who can do a double back on a ramp? I do, yeah, he's crazy, right? I know, I met him once, and he taught me how to um, do a whip ride, but now I can't do it anymore. Oh, what? Just keep practicing it, you'll get it back. Let's hop in on this one. Go, go. Alright, the indoor pump track definitely gets my heart racing, definitely makes me smile. For one reason in particular, you can probably guess, and it's because of these two quarters on either side of the pump track. So this pump track is way more short than the one outside. In comparison, it's probably like a third the length of the one on the outside. However, because you have these quarters on either side, for me personally, I like it a lot because then that allows me to do regular park tricks. Have you been practicing tricks? Maybe that's why. Try learning a trick. Think of one in your head, practice the motion of it, and then go off a ramp that you like, and practice that same motion. That's a long time, dude. Oh, it's a six scooter, can I see it? Yeah. Here, trade you real quick. You got the lucky crew complete. Nice, and blue Royale. So cool, I like it. How long have you had it for? Oh, since last Christmas. Oh, no way. Christmas, yeah. It still looks so fresh to me. <laughs> I like it. Personally, I think that the indoor pump track is much better than the outdoor pump track. Even though I really like those berms that go in and out on the outdoor pump track, this pump track is like way faster because it's wood and you can go way higher doing bigger tricks because of these quarters on either side. I love both of them, but I like this one better. It is a beautiful new day here at Woodward Park City. Today's Thursday, today is the second to last day, and I know tomorrow I'm just gonna be absolutely wiped out. So today I wanted to do a little time trial with the scooter campers and the multi-sport campers and do, what would you do for three? B3 Cody Flam wheels. We're gonna, since all the riders are at different skill levels, a best trick contest doesn't really make sense. And we're at the outdoor park right now. So what we've done is we've created a race course. Each rider is gonna go around the perimeter of this W skate park area. Gonna finish on the top of the last quarter pipe and the one with the fastest time gets the wheels. If any of you guys wanna win some free wheels, come over here, we're gonna play again. Yeah! Okay, so right here where I'm standing, you guys, this is the starting line. We're gonna right. start with our scooters right behind this yellow piece. Okay. And this is what this is the course that we're gonna do. You can follow me, we're not gonna go fast. Okay. We're riding this way, 
And you see those little water guns on the ground right there? Uh -huh. These are your checkpoints and you have to go through each checkpoint in order for your line to count. So there's the first checkpoint. You come through here, all the way over here. Look at how many kids are behind me. Then you go to this checkpoint. This is all super easy. This is the easy part. And now this is where it gets challenging. We have to go through this checkpoint here and it depends on your skill level. But So if you're capable, I want you to jump over this step down and get up onto that quarter. If you're not able to actually jump this, you can pick up your scooter and run down, but you have to finish up here. Do you guys understand? Yeah, I understand. But check it out. See the little ramp right next to it? Uh -huh. You can climb up on that, and then you can pick your scooter up. Then you can put it on the big one, and then you can climb up. Okay. You got it. I believe in you. Whenever you're ready, Jason's gonna start the time. Send it. Here he goes. First one up, Kai is loving. Dude, he wants these. I love it. Dude, he's setting a really high standard for all of you guys. Let's see it, let's see it. Oh, yes. And time stop. All right. What was his time? Ethan, what are your thoughts going into this race? Oh, look at this guy go. Ethan is going super fast. I love that Kai, he was the first one to go, set a really fast standard for all these other guys, so they're super motivated. See if he can jump this step down. Oh, you can! Ready and stop! Oh no! Wait, what was it? What was it? Oh no! You were literally like half a second off right now, man. Let's see it. Over. Almost finishing. That time. What was it? 1915. I love the motivation. This turn right here is super fast. Oh wow, dude, surely that has to be 18. What was it? 17 seconds. What? Dude, all right. Connor is in first place right now. Give us a knock. Time to start. What do you think? Commentate this. I don't think he's pumping hard enough, to be honest. To be honest with you, I agree. Connor was, Connor was so ambitious. Drake is kind of casual right now. He's got four. Oh, wow, though. Oh, wow. No. 18.04. That, that second place worthy right there. Hey, you. Thomas is flying right now. Wow. Dude, that was a really ambitious pump. I like it. Can he break 17 seconds? Oh, what was his time? 16, yo! Good job, dude. Here we go. Cut in the corner. Let's see it. So far, Thomas is looking like he's got really good prospects at taking this W. All right, after many contestants, one grand prize and then one secondary prize, we finally have a winner, everybody. It's Thomas. Here you go, you get some free new wheels. What do you think of them? What do you have to say to the people? Uh, subscribe to Cody, and I don't have a YouTube channel, so yeah. Good job, dude. I'm stoked for you.